As we're fast discovering on this essential Japan journey, this is a country full of contradictions. And on this trip, Scenic makes sure we experience them all. So after a jaunt through the countryside, we're back in the big smoke of Nagoya. The fourth largest city in the country is home to a couple of its major attractions, including one of Japan's largest castles. Nagoya Castle was almost entirely destroyed in World War II, with only a few of its original turrets remaining. The main keep was reconstructed in the 1950s and now contains a museum of the castle's history. So this gives us a great idea of how Nagoya Castle was built. I know, you know, how to really pull the huge stones. It would have and taken thousands takes... of people. Oh, yeah, it says, you know, 10 to, this way, you know, 10 to 100,000 people can pull these huge stones kind of easily. All right, let's see, let's okay. see if I've got it. Okay. <laughs> I bet they didn't have to do it in high heels, though, huh? <laughs> Woo! After exploring the traditions and centuries of history of Nagoya Castle, we are revving things up with a visit to Motor Enthusiast Heaven, otherwise known as the Toyota Museum. Toyota is actually a town on the outskirts of Nagoya, and the bulk of the business of making cars still happens there, but the history of the empire has been recreated right here. Oddly enough, the famous car company had its origins in weaving. There might not seem to be an obvious link between textile production and the car industry, but when you see the size of these machines, it seemed obvious that Toyota would move into the car industry and become one of the world's leading car manufacturers. The automobile pavilion covers everything from the first Corollas and Coronas to present day models and most in between. Woo! It's far from your average museum. This is Technoland with interactive displays from the days of textiles through to Toyota cars. From Nagoya, we're headed southwest to the charming city of Kyoto, the former imperial capital of the country for over a thousand years. Despite its population, this is a very easy country to get around, thanks to its fast and super efficient public transport system. We're now travelling to Kyoto on the Shinkansen, or the bullet train, which travels at up to 300 kilometres an hour, which turns a two and a half hour car trip into a blurringly fast 30 minute trip on the train. After just enough time to take in the scenery whizzing past, we've arrived in the ancient city of Kyoto and one of its most prized natural attractions. This is one of Kyoto and indeed Japan's most photographed spots. It's believed it was planted many centuries ago to protect surrounding temples from evil spirits. As a former capital, Kyoto is still the home of many ancient Japanese traditions and foremost is the tea ceremony. The ritual evolved many centuries ago at a time when dressing in a kimono was standard daily practice. So I've chosen a kimono to put on for the tea ceremony, but this is secret women's business. Excuse us. Konnichiwa. There's about seven layers underneath this kimono. I can hardly breathe. Oh, konnichiwa, everybody. Today, I'd like to show you how to drink tea with good manners. I love tea. I start the day with tea. I finish the day with tea. But the Japanese, they take it to a whole new level. 
The tea ceremony and kimono wearing is one of Scenic's enriched experiences. Unique events exclusively organised for us lucky Scenic guests.